Good morning, Hornet Nation. Welcome to The Daily Buzz. I'm Joe Hutzler. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2019. Happy to have you back after a long spring break and hopefully a great happy St. Patrick's Day for you. Yesterday, we had plenty going on here at Lynchburg Sports, so let's get started. Coach Kadelka and the Lynchburg men's lacrosse team were at the mecca of Division III men's lacrosse this past weekend at the fifth annual Mustang Classic at Stevenson University. And on Friday night, some rain came in, but it was the aura of playing under the lights that had Coach Kadelka and the team so excited before the game. All right, let's go play. Let's go play lacrosse tonight. Beat these guys every ground ball. Beat them to the end line if you got to die. Outwork everybody. All right, this, this is the time where you put everything you did over the summer. This is the 100 degree days, right? This is the weight room and wake in the morning, at night, when it's steaming hot in that place. These are the games that you win games from doing that. It's this time of year. We're only going to get better from here. Let's start tonight. Let's explode. Let's fire all over the place. Let's go win this game. Let's go. Man, I could listen to that every day to get me pumped for the remainder and we hope you get pumped as well for the start of your week. We began on Friday night, number 19 Lynchburg, number 20 Stevenson, and it was the Hornets getting on the board first. Kevin Rogers using that left-handed rocket shot to find the bottom of the net. Great defense as well for both teams. Patrick Cornelius had 10 saves on the night. Here is two of those keeping the Mustangs at bay who had the advantage most of the game, including an 8-4 to four advantage at one point. Check out this reception, one-handed. Seamus McDonald collecting that from Pat Cornelius. We mentioned the 8-4 lead for Stevenson, but it was moments like this that allowed Lynchburg to come back in the third and fourth quarter. Rogers with his second of the night beats the keeper five hole, and they continue the comeback effort. Now in the third, it is Evan Lombardo diving into the crease. Again, that's allowed this year as long as you start outside of it. He picks up a goal. More goals for the Hornets. Colin Dean, two, one of his two on the night, makes it a one goal game. And then later on, check out this play by the young man, the freshman number seven, tossing it, keeping it alive, and then eventually Lombardo scoring again. Colin Dean, we told you he had two. There's the second one, a rocket off the left, and they continue to roll. Right now it's 8 8 with 4 10 left, and then it was Rivington Lambert. He was able to pick up a goal on the run. No one came to play defense. He said, no problem, I'm just going to go ahead and score. And then the cherry on top, the 10th goal and what would be the game winner, Trammell Robinson makes it 10-9, the eventual score, 11-9, Lynchburg with the win over number 20, Stevenson. The next day, number seven, Wesleyan, the defending national champs, Lynchburg taking on this zone defense. It was tough goings in the first quarter. Lynchburg not able to muster up a goal, but Trammell Robinson and the team consistently continuing to work, finding those pockets on that defense. Here's a shot by Evan Lombardo, who plays defense after the pass from the keeper. Colin Dean, the beneficiary. Hat trick for the junior, and the Hornets just one goal away from tying it up. Dean, with his third of the day, goes behind the back and scores, but in the end, Lynchburg just ran out of time. They could have used two or three more minutes. They fall to number seven, Westland, nine to eight. Other results from the weekend, we go back to Saturday and we take a look at what Lynchburg softball, after becoming the number 13th team in the country, did this weekend. And they, all they did was win another doubleheader pair of games. The first game against Mary Washington, 2-0, including three hits and one run scored by Mackenzie Chitwood and a nice day inside the pitcher's uh, circle for Taylor Belknap. In game two, all Lynchburg. Just five innings it took to defeat the Eagles. 13-3, your final score, five RBIs for the catcher and senior, Brittany Coffey. Lynchburg baseball also had a great weekend on Saturday, a 10-7 win in game one and collecting their first ODAC victory of the season over EMU, who's actually scoring the most runs of any ODAC team to this point in the season, and the Hornets did their, what they needed to do in the first game. And in game two, a shutout for Hunter Campbell, the junior, Pitching nine consecutive innings, a complete game for him, a 3-0 final score, and deservedly so, getting a little bath after the game. And did you know it was coming? No. Oh. <laughs> anyway. 
Oh, you gotta love it. And a great weekend weather too, so it wasn't as cold as maybe you might think. Also a great weekend for Lynchburg Track and Field, their second outdoor meet of the season. Ninth in program history for Camaretta. Shadku also with a terrific weekend. Reed Sharkey as well. And Maddie Van Aken and Caitlin Johnson program records in their events. If you want to find out more about those records, you can just uh, click on over to lynchburgsports.com. That'll do it for our show today. Plenty more coming this week as we get back in the full swing of school and, of course, sports here at the University of Lynchburg. If you want to follow along, you can always do so with the One Nation app for Apple and Android devices. Until tomorrow morning, I'm Joe Hutzler reminding you it's a great day to be a Hornet, and we are One Nation.